Hi. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the latest episode of the forecast stream. Uh, episode 36, and happy Halloween to everyone. Technically, that's tomorrow, but uh, hopefully you guys can... There we go. You can hear me much better now. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, uh, you guys have a safe and happy Halloween tomorrow. Um, as usual, I am joined by co-workers. Can you guess who they are? Anybody have any guesses? No, good, because I'm, I'm just going to tell you. This over here is Spencer. He's a weed artist, and this is Ben. Hey, what's hey, up? Hey, Ben. Hey, you guys want to take you guys want to take this off because it's hot. <laughs> All right, cool. Whew. That was hot. We were we were doing that for like ten minutes as part of the test, and now we like very toasty. That was gross. That's whew. yeah, sweaty guys. So welcome again to Offensive Combat, Spencer. You, have you been on the show before? Once. One time, and that was on our launch special last year, right? Yep. When, um, so welcome to Spencer. He's actually uh, been part of the Euphoria team from the very beginning. Um, has a lot of really great opinions. Uh, he's up there on the art ladder. You look like a monkey. I look. <laughs> <laughs> he's up there. Uh, so welcome to our show. For those of you who are just joining us, this is Offensive Combat. It's a free-to-play first-person shooter, playable in your bra <laughs> playable in your browser. You can play it at uh, offensivecombat.com, which I'm going to show you right here. Because check this out. This is a uh, this is oh that's a that's a surprise. Oh. Offensivecombat.com, <laughs> uh, or you can go to Facebook.com/slash Offensive Combat, and don't forget to f like us while you're there, or follow us on Twitter.com at Euphoria Games. Also, uh, one little thing we'd like to share today for our South American players: uh, starting tomorrow, that would be Halloween again. Uh, we're going to be available in Brazil. Thank you very much. Uh, to our publishing partners over there in Nova. We're going to be launching in Brazil tomorrow. We're really excited about it. It's a closed beta test for those guys. But that means that folks that are uh, in South America that play our game, of which there are a ton. A lot of people. Um, you will now have those local servers to play with. And uh, to get there, you just need to go to uh, br.4game.com tomorrow. Right now, this is just a testing site. Uh, tomorrow, though, the closed beta test will be there. So look forward to that tomorrow. Where am I? Hey, there we go. And there's footage of the game. Probably be helpful if I go back there. I want to stick the chat room. Ooh, new feature. Um, also, big shout out to Never Had Shawarma, who is uh, one, uh, I think, our number one player last year. Or last year. Last year. It's been a long uh, Last week. And uh, this week, he's still the number one player in the Americas and the top player, I'm sorry, the number one player in Canada and still in the top 12 for the Americas. So he provided the footage for us this week. Thank you to him. And uh, hello to all of you. We have uh, have an interesting show for you this week. What do you guys think? Interesting. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. It's interesting because uh, we we've made we've made some. I I think the best way to put it is that we've refocused ourselves. Yep. Would you, th would you say that's fair? Yeah. yeah. Shifted direction a little bit. A little bit. So, and we're going to talk a little bit what that means and and what's going on. But <clears throat> again, we're also going to be answering your questions. Uh, let me pull out my papers here. Hope you don't get offended. <laughs> um, let's let's go ahead and for those of you, if this is your first time joining us, you've never uh, visited us before, or you're just curious, like to hear us talk. Um, every week that we're going to have a stream, we go on our forums at forums.offensivecombat.com. We place a thread up there, ask you to leave your questions, and we'll tell you and we we'll say, hey, ask us what you want. Maybe we'll get on the show. And uh, so that's what I have here. Is that Noosh? List. Noosh. Noosh. Say hi. You remember him from? Three or four episodes Hi ago? Hi. Hi. Isn't that when he promised <laughs> to dress up like a pony? Yeah, he's supposed yeah. to be a brony today. Yeah, why ah. didn't you dress up like a brony? I'm sorry, I forgot my outfit. <laughs> Go but back to have, your Pokemons. We have questions from the crew, and uh, and Noosh is not going to dress up as a brony, which is unfortunate. Shame. But uh, first, before we get to those questions, let's take a look at our top 12 players. This week we did a little bit early. We released it yesterday instead of today because we... Push a show forward. Um, ben, you want to go over the list of the top players globally? Uh, well, what do we have? Number one is Malver. Mm -hmm. We should probably stop, start at the bottom. How do you usually do it? I, I just know. read them. Yeah. Number one is Malver. <laughs> number two is uh, <laughs> Not a Soup Bowl. Help me out with number three, Kara Sawa. Mm -hmm. like Let's cure. see, number four, it could be Zets. What I do would you hope think? so. If, yeah. it's, if it's not Zets, it's <laughs> Zets. Number is a lot harder five to is E tank, interesting name. Number mm -hmm. six is Gift. Number seven, 
Yeah, I recognize that name. Ultra Insanity. Mm -hmm. Number eight is L. James 90. Number nine is Never Had Shawarma. Number 10 is M. Noya. Ooh, 11. Saros? Saros? Mm -hmm. yeah? 12 is I. Grig 32. And there you go. And you see uh, quite a bit of movement for folks. Malver number one. Um, been a pretty interesting week. Wherever you see those down arrows, that means they're still in the top 12, but they moved down since last week. Spencer, you helped make this graphic. I you did. did the whole thing. I just I just input the Photoshop stuff, uh, where the in the text fields. You did everything else. Yep. Um, here's the America's players. You want to go over them real quick? <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. So we have not a soup bowl taking the lead for the Americas. Um, Karasawa in second. We have what? What do we decide it was? Zets. Zets, Zets in third. Uh, placing at number four, Ultra Insanity. Five is L James ninety. And then never had shawarma drop into six. Uh, at seven, hate mail please FB. Number eight, bubble Gottams. Number nine is Hill Tribe bringing it up and zero at number ten. Zero the mighty warrior. Our Quake Con champion from two thousand twelve. Yep. Uh, let's see, going to number eleven we have Charles LC sixty seven, and rounding out the list at twelve is Kems. Good old Kems. And then here you have our European list, which of course will be the one that I have to read. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, usually has the names in which my pronunciation is terrible. But Malver, as you can see, is the number one player still up there. E-Tank, number two. Gift, number three. All brand new to their slots this week. Uh, Imnoia goes down from last week, but still in the top four. Sorrow stays strong at number five. Igrig, 32. 12th worldwide, now it's sixth in Europe. And then uh, we have a, a couple of familiar names and some new names that round out the bottom six there. Um, KRLE at number seven. Papavlidis, uh, a Greek warrior. Going there at uh, number eight, uh, aspartame, which is spelled with numbers, uh, also <laughs> found in this drink uh, that you can't see because the camera's not on. Uh, uh, Blackjack one, Molchik, and Krolix eight. So congratulations to all those guys. Let's get back to the main game. There it is, and there's the chat room. Mine is blown. We'd like to say, actually, as we see in the chat room, welcome back to Canna Banana, who uh, is a long time, yes. long time supporter of the game, member of our forums, somebody Mach uh, machinima master. Yes. Machinima yes. Master. You might remember we posted uh, a blog from Kenna quite a while back. I think it was about two months ago where uh, yeah. he created Offensive Combat the Movie, which yeah. is a cool little Machinima style video. And that's on our blog. It's also on uh, YouTube. So look for that. Just type in Kenna Banana Offensive Combat. It'll show up real quick. So welcome back to you. I, uh, he's been gone for a while. And um, welcome back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that is on behalf of the whole team. We were just talking about you actually yeah. earlier today. At McDonald's when I had a McRib. <laughs> Not Denny's. I had two McRibs. They're back, people. Oh, shit. That's right. <laughs> um, so let's get to our first player question, and then after that I want to talk to you guys about the new direction that we, we talked to earlier. I talked about earlier. The first one's from Guami, who's another longtime member oh, of, yeah. of, our, uh, of our community, and that's what's the ETA on major features like friend lists, clans, tournaments, private rooms, etc.? And I think that the answer to that provides the perfect segue into uh, what I wanted to talk to you guys about. So, Ben, if you want to go ahead and... As far as an ETA, yeah. there, there is no ETA other than those are the top things that we're going to be working on yes. upcoming. And they're things that we've wanted in for a long time, communities wanted for a long time, and we're going to prioritize everything that we do going forward based on those those items there part of our part of the new direction that we were talking about spencer was that um we want to refocus we want to refocus on the game what made our game interesting and fun for folks in the beginning and we, we you know we'll be the first to admit for a while there i think we got we, we got away from what we thought made the game stronger than the competition yep. more unique than the competition and now we're pushing ourselves back in the direction that we originally yep. wanted to go and um, we're really excited about it. I team right now, super excited. I, I think that's an understatement, how much oh, yeah. everyone's been talking about if it. If we had a portable camera, we'd take it around. Yeah. yeah. We, go, we can stick a GoPro on GoPro. our heads from now on. Yeah. <laughs> Just run around the office <laughs> to simulate the speed. <laughs> but people are very excited about it. We're happy. Spencer, can you talk a little bit um, uh, visually as, as our lead artist, somebody who could um, go over some of the details of some of the visual ways in which we plan on improving the game? Sure. So, I mean, there's two things happening right now. Like, uh, with more thought going into the impending standalone release that we want to try and achieve, 
it's kind of set us taken a step back to look at what we need to do to kind of bring the quality of everything up to snuff so that it runs better, looks better, plays better, um, to kind of complement that release. But then the other part, the bigger part, is to what you're saying, going back to the roots, kind of bringing back some of the lore that we had in the game and how we visually represent that is going to be looking at all the stuff that you play around with in the world, like the jump pads, the pickups, the power-ups, the characters themselves, the hex dome, the scoreboards, and trying to tie all that stuff back together so it doesn't feel just like random bits and bobs everywhere. Yeah. So we're doing lots of new stuff with the, uh, with the hex dome in particular to try and make that a feature and have it kind of call out certain events in the world, make it more dynamic. Also, just kind of up the level of uh, interest for map loads and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Give you guys a little bit more flash and pizzazz to that. And then cool stuff happening with the pickups, that's for sure. And you see one of the questions in our chat is from uh, Kevin Cardoso. says, who's the competition? So our competition are um, like our, da our down-the-street neighbors at... Zombie That's with zombie. black light. Black light. Um, you have also the big guys out there like Uber Strike and um, Counter Strike Online and uh, who, who oh, I leave Warface. A Warface. That's which, a new one. That yeah. Open beta. Epic Stalker. So Don't one you? of the, one a, a lot of the things that those games have in common is, and this isn't a knock against them. This is a stylistic choice that they've made. Is that they are very military focused, very realistic. Yep. And part of what set us apart in the beginning and what we're focusing on now on trying to to hold on to again is um, trying to be unique in our style and our yep, approach yep. And, and how we look and and what the background is of our presentation. Mm -hmm. um, so that's specifically what we're referring to and uh, we think that that's why you guys love the game initially and why we're hoping that you yep, totally love agree. it again. Yep. Uh, humor. That's yes. another thing that humor is... Humor is... We'll be making return. Not so serious. That's right. No, next, no fart jokes. No. Draw the line. No, yeah, no, no, no fart no. jokes. Those are gone. Hopefully. <laughs> if someone uh, sneaks one in there, I don't know. Couple people mentioned that they want to see Disasteroids back. Ah, uh, that can actually happen shortly. We fixed the issues. Yep. So specifically, uh, the reason that Disasteroids was taken out of the map rotation is because there was a technical issue as it related to the jump pads. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you guys talk a little bit about that and and uh, what the problem was and what the fix is and? It was just a minor code code change. That broke them and caused people to uh, travel way further than they're supposed to. Uh, it was fixed and should go out this release to the next release. There you go. And uh, by this to re release to the next release, um, that means our next update, yep. which uh, will be coming very, very soon. I think we're shooting for... Um, Late next week. Is that, what, is that the latest? Order? I think so. Yeah, so around that time. Um, if that changes, we'll let you know and we'll give you an update. But that's that's the plan. This question comes from Grand Talks. It's, uh, when are the weapon balances? Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I'm asking it wrong. When the weapon balances are rolled out, what will the difference be between the time to kill of the old and the new weapons? We want to actually increase or decrease the time to kill. We want players to have a better chance of evading an enemy, and we want encounters to last a little bit longer. There you go. This sometimes simple answers the simple answers are the best ones. And, and there you go. well, along with that, the the armor has to be rebalanced as well to go along with it. So those two will play off of each other to to find the right balance. But we want encounters to take a little bit longer than they currently do. Malver, uh, who is our number one player, as you saw, uh, asked us uh, why are all the updates at the same time. Is it possible to start releasing updates every week? Every week is a, is a bit difficult because they're basically the way that it works is we have time frames or to plan the content or the bug fixes or the feature ads build it and then test it yeah. and then release and that that time frame is usually not quick enough to be a week but it is no. part of our new our new f uh, refocus of, of offensive combat to have much more regular content releases and updates and uh, it's i think actually a really good um segue into into the next release is to yeah. one of the reasons is because we kind of agree with you releasing a bunch of stuff at once is um uh, it can be awesome at the time, but if it's there's a long distance between releases, yep, it can yep. feel like too long. So uh, we're actually going to start tiering some of the releases that we had before, mm -hmm. rather than trying to shove it all up into one update, which sounds a little obscene. <laughs> um, so Ben, can you talk a little uh, bit about uh, some things that we can expect to see in, in the next update that we're working on for sure? For next week? Yes. What are the top things? Well, first of all, we took out breaking in crafting. Yeah, that's So items can no longer break when you craft. That's right. Ever. 
That's never going to happen again. We uh, changed the auto balance because that was causing some issues with people, especially top level players, being yanked out of matches. Mm -hmm. And that uh, wasn't a fair thing to do all the time. Um, what else did we do? In, oh. reg in regards to the. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. In regards to the breakage, uh, obviously, before we had a protection that was oh, yes. there when it did break. Yep. Uh, how have we approached. Uh, that now that you can't have breaking is there what is protections function now if any well so we took out protection and added two lucky charm slots so now you can double up on your uh chance of improving the level of your your armor but no more breakage and protection is no longer needed so. correct and if you use a lucky charm you're guaranteed to level yeah. the item whereas there's now or currently you could actually get a no no change. Yeah, there is possible currently to have no change upon that, but now mm -hmm. if uh, if you do use that lucky charm, you will see an improvement. Yep. Um, Definitely. So I think those are really good positive changes. What was the other thing you were going to touch on before I before yeah, I? No, I totally forgot. <laughs> Thanks. Oops. It's, yeah. it's gone. Auto balancing. Um, we're introducing the um to help. Oh oh. Sorry, go for it. I don't know which patch it was, but we actually had uh, completely nerfed weapons when jumping. Jump, oh yeah, the bloom. <laughs> jump bloom for ARs and SMGs especially was just insane. Is our last one, I think. Yeah, so that has been fixed and or taken back to pre-change levels. Which means, uh, all, uh, to, to put it into uh, regular terms, you can jump and shoot at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> without, uh, yeah. without major penalties. Yeah. Which, you, which I think is better for our audience. I agree. Yeah. Yep. Uh, another thing that we're doing is, uh, this might not touch the folks who regularly watch our program, but we're also uh, bringing back our uh, our our help modes. Um, folks are going to have a little bit more help if it's their first time playing mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. um, what we call internally the Fatui, which stands for the first time user experience. Yep. Um, so those will be back to help teach new players in. And um, man, it feels like there's lobby. Lobby chat. Lobby chat. So that's the other thing. Lobby chat is indeed coming in the next episode. There you uh, go. Up update, not yeah. episode. Now, originally, as you, as you know, we were wanted to put friends list, lobby chat, friends chat, all of that together in one. And uh, we were tired of, I mean, quite honestly, we were tired of having to wait a really long time in order to give you guys features. And that's yep. why we're tiering. And now that's why you're going to see those features next week. And then the idea is to get the friends and, and the other stuff that we didn't get in the immediate yep. update following. At least this way, you guys don't have to wait longer to get some kind of update, and that's yeah. our that's our thinking behind that. Um, anything to add? Oh no, I mean there, are, there there are several things that have been tweaked behind the scenes, but nothing that stands out right now. Uh, do we already have lobby chat? We do, but this is an improvement. This doesn't yeah. have as many bugs, and it's yeah. fixed and updated. There are some issues. <laughs> yeah, they they won't be there on Thursday. Um. Let's go to another question. This one is from our users on the forums, and uh, this comes from in Lucas sixty two consumables. What's the plan? Currently, we don't support them at all. Um, we never really had enough data to determine if people actually like them in game or not. Um, they were a thing that were kind of taken out early. Um, I and, really, yeah. And for the folks who haven't played the game in a while or never saw it, what were our consumables? Um, we, well, for the most part, they were, what, the pones? Mm -hmm. Or not the pones, the, uh, the beacons, mm -hmm. which allowed you to find a person that actually killed you. They would show up on your radar. You can go get them. Um, what other consumables do we have? Do we have oh, we had speed boost, speed boost. team buffs, team debuffs. Yeah. Um, I don't think we would bring consumables back in that fashion, but they will be tied into gameplay mm -hmm. so we'd re we're going to move that into a an experience that everybody has access to and things that would be spawned into the world that sort of thing we don't want people to be able to buy something that's going to give them a direct advantage spencer you have some um i think pretty valid and uh detailed opinions on consumables and what's what's your what is your uh outlook in in general on the consumables in our game or in in competitive shooters in general I mean, do you think it works for our game, or do you think it do you think it uh, it was a good move for us to take them out early, or, or do you like uh, well? 
I'll stop throwing in things. Let's say you talk <laughs> about it. How about that? Go for it. I like the uh, I like the buffs that they give you. Maybe not the way that they're used. Um, for a while, we tossed around the idea of the pones giving oh. you the consumables and the buffs. So it was like an instant. You pwn, you take the risk to do that, we give you the reward of extra damage or whatever. Mm -hmm. In that sense, we had a lot of fun with it, and it was really cool. Um, as the paid-per-use type things, still fun, still cool for those willing to use it, but um, I don't think it helped gameplay as much as it did before because it wasn't that give-and-take. And that's part of what our, our, our refocus direction is right now. Is it's all about a good gameplay experience, fun. We want fun to be first. We want... Um, we want folks to be happy regardless if they're giving a zero cents or yep. uh, a million cents, mm -hmm. which yep. is preferred. People should have access. <laughs> so yep. give us some of that. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. No, no, people should have access to uh, functionality of the game. Yes. Everybody should. Yes. And so that's something that we're working on um, that we think is going to be really effective. And when we say that the team is very excited about where we're going with the game, that is the truth. There's Justin Cook, oh, our hey, uh, very awkward walking producer. Bubble Gottoms. I think armor should be removed from crafting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so do we. Yeah. So we're on the same page on that. Uh, it's not going to be overnight, though. No, no. These. So one of the These things. Are long term. One of the things that we found is that. Um, well, so we didn't find it. We already knew this. But one of the things that uh, is is definitely interesting about refocusing your game and and updating it and streamlining it, and making it more effective is. Uh, just how much time some of these things take, especially once yeah. systems are already built and you have to either revert them or build on top of them or create all new art. Spencer, one of the questions that um, comes up a lot in all game communities in general is, uh, why don't you just add X piece of a map or this new building or this new effect or this new level, whatever it might be? Can you t You've dealt with that extensively. Can you talk a little bit about what goes into adding something as simple as, let's say, the jump pads, which uh, were something you touched on earlier? Sure. Well, I mean, there's the first thing to consider is there's always that chance that we take something, we add something new, and we introduce a new bug. So that's the biggest concern. Um, but, I mean, we do that all the time. Like, if you look at Disasteroids, from the time we released the map, it was wildly different. And then after we played it for a couple months and everything, we released Series 2 as it is now, which is a completely different map. Um, so sometimes it's it's not the worry of breaking something or other than this, but it's like, is the time and effort that we're putting into changing something really worth it, or should we spend our time put, making a whole new map? Because, I mean, yeah. we're, we're just like the players. We could crank out turbine variants all day long and keep putting new buildings in turbine, but at some point we like to see new maps, play new maps, work on new maps, and enjoy them. Um, but from a technical standpoint, yeah, it's always the concern of, are we introducing a new bug by putting this in there? Uh, are we breaking a sight line? Are we changing someone's favorite route that they like to use to run to get the power-ups and stuff? Mm -hmm. So there's always that risk. Um, but that's why it's good to have like the heat map information to, so we can kind of have an idea of where everyone's going, what parts of the map are sacred to the players and stuff like that. And that's and that's uh, also something we've been using a lot more in the last couple months is using heat map information and really looking at it, at that information. Um, there's nothing Nothing there? Okay. Yeah. So then I'm going to... Can when you guys go grab Justin? Because this is a question um, we get all the time, but it's uh, it always seems to be worth it. Is it. And it comes from Photon Ascendant. And I would like to know about FFA OCR changes and the absolute value of OCR gained and lost during a match. O OCR, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is Offensive Combat Rating. And that's what we showed you earlier on our top 12 players list. There you see where we list OCR. It's how we match make. It's also how we determine our top players. Um... And so Justin will be coming in to talk about that in a second. And he, he, <laughs> they didn't get to see it. Oh, oh. He came in on a horse mask, but you guys just missed it. Not just any horse, unicorn. Yeah, unicorn. He's, he's classy. <laughs> there you go. Um, so this came from Photon Ascendant and wants to know specifically about the FFA OCR change and the values of OCR gained and lost during a match. Um, so the... Okay, that's two questions, right? The FFA. Yeah, it is. So the FFA part, did we change FFA at all? Not recently. Um, yeah, so it has been a while since the FFA changed. I guess they're not live, and that's the problem. The change that we made live is the we made the difference to uh, pones, right? Vo uh, the value of pones, and that's what they're referring to. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the biggest change is, like Ben was mentioning, he changed... Uh, point values in the game. So when you play, you used to get a boatload of points for poning, 
uh, as well as like random other objectives that weren't exactly team objectives. They were sort of individual side objectives. Uh, those don't count near as much as kills, capturing a flag, taking a domination point, that stuff. Um, Pwns don't count at all. Nope. All right, well, so you can pwn to your heart's delight, and you will get nothing except <laughs> body parts. Body parts. Um, so that's the... <laughs> yes, it goes to your personal score. So that's the hugest change for OCR, is poning does Well, in this case, poning no longer affects OCR. So kills are your number one thing in FFA. Um, we did do some work around balancing the points in FFA. So if you are half the score or better... Sorry, sorry if you're in like the top eight out of a 16-person game, your OCR will go up. So there's a lot less OCR loss from getting destroyed by one really good player. Uh, this question comes from per perplex Perplexic? I think? This is probably a good one for Ben when he gets back. Yeah. So when Ben gets back, because he's right there, um, how do you guys feel about each item having a progression equal towards Tier 5 items? Uh, that way I every weapon has a chance to end the game if they want to further progress it, or they can stop at the next weapon. You have to think about that one for a while. Yeah. The first, basically, the gist of the question is, what do you guys... How, how do you feel about each item having a progression equal towards Tier 5 items? Um... Meaning armor and items, yeah. I think a lot of us like that. I think a lot of... A lot of us don't like the current thematic system for how you are getting body parts, like... Chicken versus... Chicken and robot makes a Call of Duty head guy. Right. So I think... Jeremy especially wants to do a lot of changes around getting sort of a theme going, like the weaker robots, build stronger robots, build the final annihilator type robots. Yeah. And by stronger, that means in appearance. Yes. Not necessarily in ability. Yep. Just how they look. Just so so the progression is more uh, natural. It, fe it feels like it makes sense more. Yep. Um, to, uh, want me to answer the other half of that OCR question? Yeah. What was it? I don't know. <laughs> other half of the OCR question? I don't even know. Um, was uh, what are the absolute values of OCR gained and lost during a match? The absolute values. Um, I believe right now, I'm pretty sure 20 points is the most you can gain unless you just do an amazing job destroying people. Uh, at the same time, 20 points is the most you can lose. Um, if you're in the higher ranks, which is above 1700, it's a much harder to get points. So I think up in like the 1950, 1970 area, you're getting at most five, ten points per round or per uh, win. Okay. Uh, the so system is balanced so that 2,000 is the, the max possible cap for any person. And there can only be one guy at that at any one time. Which was done for the first time last week, and then very quickly went back down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, because it's, it's very hard to accomplish. Um, and here you see Urinal Burglar clarified, and then perplexed what, per this guy. They agreed. I think his main question is making all the guns useful at end game rather than everyone just using those few guns at T5. Yes. All guns useful. Yes, we agree with that, and we're working very hard on making um, the system accommodate that. Yep. Yeah. I think there's also a lot of thinking around a wider spread of guns at the Tier 5 level. So right now, when you get to Tier 5, it's either it's like a, it's a, an SMG, an assault rifle, and a sniper rifle, and that's all anyone uses at that level. But we'd love to see more grenade launcher, shotgun... More of everything. More of everything, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and in general. And I think that a lot of the changes we're talking about, I think folks are really going to enjoy. And uh, But we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, and we want to make sure that we've got it in place before we talk too much about, about that. Um, you guys should ask Ben about weapon drops. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> it's, it'll be done by Friday. Don't, they, don't say that. You said, the same, you said the same thing about the... The friends list. Yeah. Sorry it will be that. done soon, though, yeah? What? Friends or weapon drops? Yeah, there you go. I'll just nod. Yeah, it's nod. Um, while, you're, while you're here, uh, Johnny Rover wants to know lag. What's being done about that? Lag. Um, a lot. So we have some partners of ours that we're working with in terms of server farms. are putting up a bunch of servers in Brazil this week. Today, even? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So there will be a lot, especially for the South American folks, uh, going on up tomorrow. New Specifically servers. at 6 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Eastern is when they can expect to see it in Brazil. Yep. So this soon literally means like uh, 24 hours or something yeah. like that. Tomorrow. <laughs> so you'll see a lot of, you'll see a log of lag going away 
regardless of whether you're South America or North America, basically because you won't be playing with them anymore. But you'll, there's still a lot of people in both regions. So for players, and this is a good technical question, for players who, um, in South America, who are already playing our game, are they able to move that account over, or are they going to need to create a new um, account? I think right now the no, because down there it's back to a closed beta situation. So um, I don't think they're actually taking money down there. So you can get most of the parts without actually paying. So those in South America, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so closed beta test versus open beta test, that's the difference. And that's yep, that's why, the difference. That's why the accounts aren't there. Yep. So, uh, but once their closed beta test is, is done, they'll move into open beta just like mm -hmm. uh, America and Europe. And I would recommend going down there. And, uh, we'll send out a link eventually of those servers down there. Uh, create an account there too. Try it out. See if you like the game better and down there. Yeah. There are a little bit of differences in balance of weapons. There's a few differences in what you can buy in the store, how you upgrade. So... And, uh, let's see. Here's the last question we'll ego back, Justin. Is, uh, it comes from Gravity. When are clans and parties coming? Uh, great question. Um, parties are coming out at the same time as friends, which can't say the exact dates, but probably four and a half weeks, five weeks. Um, uh, that means, as far as friends, you can add someone as a friend, invite them. You have an ignore list, so you can so you don't ever want to hear from this person again. Uh, it includes whispers, so basically you can whisper, talk to anyone who is online in the entire game at any one time. Mm -hmm. um, parties is almost exactly like Xbox parties. Invite three of your buddies to join you, and you queue and matchmake together. Um, and you can chat inside your party, regardless of whether you're in a game playing, in the menu buying stuff, wherever you are. As long as you're logged in, you can chat with anyone in your party. So is it safe to assume that we'll see that... Uh it's or not is it. it it is safe to assume that we'll see that before the holidays yes okay so there you go um any other things you want to add before you head on back justin has a ton of work to do <laughs> i know you do so is there anything you want to add before you go back uh welcome back kenna there you go i told you i told you we were talking about <laughs> it seriously we are very glad to see kenna back yes all right well thank you very much justin um, while well, Justin comes back, or Ben comes back to replace Justin, we'll remind you if this is your first time joining us, this is Defensive Combat, free-to-play, first-person shooter, currently browser-based, but we are working towards a downloadable client for release in the future. Um, don't have an exact release date for that yet, but as soon as we have one, we'll let you know. Um, and you can play us in two different places. You can go to OffensiveCombat.com, or you can go to Facebook.com slash OffensiveCombat. Like us while you're there, we're getting closer to half a million. And once we do, we're going to have some very cool stuff for you. I think, um, but you'll see. Uh, and uh, also, starting tomorrow, you'll be able to participate in the closed beta test in Brazil. Uh, so watch our blog for more on that. And if you're in Brazil, enjoy. You'll know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, ben, this question comes from Crockett 101, who actually asked in the chat. Uh -oh. Was wondering if we asked this question before he made it in, and that's what does this directional change mean? What are the plans? Who's doing what? Who's responsible for what? What does that mean? We're still working all that out. Um, the majority of the people that working on the game before still are. And we are just going to, like Spencer said earlier, follow the direction that uh, we had a year or so ago, year and a half ago, and continue down that path. Mm -hmm. um, we have a strong core that of gameplay that we kind of strayed from a bit, and now we want to kind of get back into that same trajectory that we were on before some changes went in one of the changes being crafting that's one of the changes that was debated internally mm -hmm. you know um and it turned out that it's not uh not the most popular system in the world <laughs> out there surprise yeah so we're definitely going to take a look at those things and make changes where it makes sense w uh, do you have anything to add spencer in terms of what the plans are and, and stuff that you're excited about about the game without <coughs> excuse me without uh, specifying anything that we haven't finalized yet um i'm really just excited about getting back to the roots of the game like getting back to that cohesive feel of what makes the game fun the underlying tones of like why are these weird banana characters fighting the soldiers like how are we going to make everything make sense again mm -hmm. and kind of get that feel back and let that be some of the stuff that sets us apart so you can look at a screenshot and be like that's offensive combat and have that kind of signature going on and part of the overlying theme um, of playing the game is also going to be understanding things 
easier, making them less complicated. Yep. Uh, making them more accessible. And uh, also, a big internal mantra for us is play how you want to play. Yeah. And that is something that we're really focusing on, and we think people are going to be super excited about <clears throat> once we get the plans going in. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be able to talk more about that. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm really sorry about the cough. Um, Justin W. Bother, can you guys change it so if I can now work to get my chicken belly back, $20 for it is a bit high. Wow. I didn't know it was $20. No. Well, we have uh, somebody taking a look at uh, pricing right now um, across the board in the game. This very moment. Yep. So that's all being evaluated. Yes. And all, all prices in the game are being evaluated. Um, high or low, they're being looked at. The, our entire approach to how these things are handled. Hey, Sabrina. Oh, thank you. Oh, Sabrina brought me a, a <laughs> lozenge. Thank you. Trick or treat. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that is something that we're definitely taking a look at. And again, yeah. we'll have more on that as, as, as we go on. Um, hey, developers, what's the idea about the clan system? Does it mean we can have clan matches, clan ladders, etc.? Yes, once yes. that's incorporated, you will be able to do that. Yep. I have my last one. Um, somebody asked what language this was programmed in. Uh, C Sharp. That's, uh, that's mm -hmm. what it was programmed in, using the Unity engine. Uh, what else? Oh. Well, we have another question from Greens. This is totally unrelated, but he asked it in our thread. Does anyone in the studio stash the currently retired Jones Bacon Soda? I haven't even noticed that's I'm gone. No, you. <laughs> but we do have an offensive combat branded Jones <coughs> Soda sitting around the office somewhere. We do? We do? Yeah. Where is that? Is at my yeah. desk. Well, go get it. <laughs> Show folks. By the way, no Wait. one. I've never met anyone in the world that is, loves bacon as much as uh, Spencer. That's true. Every time I go to Denny's, he eats more bacon <laughs> He, he gets a side of bacon with bacon. I thought I think I think he gets three like literally three sides, yeah. right? Yeah. He's like I want this. I want the bacon breakfast with two sides of bacon. I think yeah. that's what it is. Bacon shake. That's right. Hey, never has from us says ask my question. Which question? Yeah. From the forums. What? You've got like five hundred questions <laughs> on the forums. <laughs> I know it's true. It was it good? Uh, ice weird. Well, <laughs> Sabrina had the Jones bacon soda. She says it wasn't good. Actually, Wartab, C Sharp is supported once we make the bacon switch with syrup. to Unity 4. Once we upgrade to that, there is Linux support built in. <coughs> so don't rule Linux support out at all. But as of to right now, today, if you play the game today, yep. not currently in the, in the game, but it's been alluded to. Yep. Um, hopefully that will be remedied. Did you see the Neverheads former question? I, he, he didn't actually... Wait, I'm not... No... I can't have your babies. That's oh, that one. Not yeah. possible. That's why I didn't put that one on the list. <laughs> yeah. Because I know you're married. Yeah. And I didn't want to cause anything weird. Speaking of weird, Ice Weird wants to know when will you filter players out with high ping? Tomorrow. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> we're sort of, sort of doing that indirectly by having our open beta or closed beta launch in Brazil tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that is going to alleviate a lot of those issues that we're having right now with people being matched with people from all over the world. And then, uh, even though tomorrow is the closed beta launch in Brazil, we'll also have some additional um, uh, closed beta news for other territories following not too long after that. So we can't talk about it this week for specific reasons, but we'll tell you more about that soon. Yeah. Probably next week is when we'll tell you about it. Two weeks max. <laughs> uh, I'm looking. You know, I keep s stretching to read the questions over here, and I have them right here really tiny. Yeah, it is tiny, but when will local player be available? Standalone, I, I'm assuming. Um, I think Our so. Local or do you mean single player? Because standalone is where we are, we are working on, and um, Spencer, if you could talk a little bit, what are some advantages of standalone? Before we've talked about the technical advantages, like, oh, I don't have to wait for everything to load, but what are some of the advantages from your perspective of having the standalone? So, the biggest advantage is, like, we have our quality settings <coughs> fast, gorgeous, all that stuff. I guess the simplest way to look at it is we can push another quality setting on there for people who want to download the higher res textures, have the more detailed geometry, and just have all that extra visual goodness that the web player kind of limit, limits us from having. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's the easiest way to look at it, just cranking it up to 11, I guess. So Ice Weird was not satisfied with that answer. Okay. Um, he's in the EU, so it doesn't affect him. Also, that's not an answer for my question. Well, Justin left, so... <laughs> uh, 
Leg is something that is always going to be a worry for Justin, who is our technical director at the studio. He is always going to evaluate that and look at it and fix whatever he can fix every single update he can. Yes. He's going to do something that he can every single update. And as other engineers go through and look at other th various things, if there's things in there they can clean up, they'll clean it up. And there's just a lot of things that were kind of built on a shaky foundation, so those things are slowly getting cleaned up, and that's going to lead to a better experience. Yes, and we have a highly talented, very uh, problem-solving oriented engineer, so... I swear... The outlook is good there. Yeah, we can actually start having a filter for... <coughs> private matches and for lobbies you can make it we can make it an option that you set like what is your lowest acceptable ping we can definitely do that um, currently though the we need a lot more players for that to be feasible right now and the gameplay we see that coming up uh, this is gameplay footage provided by the number one player in Canada for offensive combat and uh, he was the number one player in all the Americas last week still top 12 players this week and that is uh, never had shawarma who's in the chat room now if he was doing this right now and chatting at the same time, that'd be even more impressive. The idea being we want to show you what a really high-level player can do, uh, what, what he can do, and also to let you guys know if you guys have footage you want to submit for our next show, we're more than happy to take Actually, it. Actually, I got a off. mail from somebody from the forums today. Oh, good. He's got a video. Uh, uh, you might have gotten the email. I don't know. I forget his name, but well, Possible. I get, a, I get them all the time, so... Yeah. Email. We um, it, So far, if you've uh, offered to have your footage appear on the show, we've brought it on with uh, without any problems. The only times we haven't done it is if uh, the user on their side has had some kind of technical issue. Yep. But yeah, I mean, we're all for showing as much footage as we can. And uh, Oh, Noosh. Noosh is on the stream. Oh, okay, very good. Noosh. Snipers represent. Are you, wh what are your play styles? For those who are unfamiliar with uh, playing with the game with you guys, how do you guys play? Uh, I tend to go with Sniper and Beagle. Or Deagle, whatever it's switched to Beagle. now. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I like the ranged combat. Ben? Ranged, uh, PMD, and uh, Razor. I wish I could tell you, but I get killed so fast I don't get to have a style. Yep. I just show up and get gunned down, and then I just repeat. But if I could, it's run and gun. It's, it's, I just like that. I like the yeah. I like the immediate satisfaction of just firing a hail of bullets. Yeah. Of course, I get killed so fast I don't usually get that. Yeah. Hate mail, please. Who's a former number one player in the world and consistently one of the top twelve? Well, players Why'd you have in to say world? former? Because he's used well, to be number one. I know. Kind of rub it in his in his face. <laughs> Still can uh, consistently a top twelve player. Wants to know what is holding back the release of the last resort map, and how are rewards going um, going to be for communities going forward? Now that's a two part question. Mm -hmm. I'll take the second one. Um, last resort has not been held back. No. No. It's it's. Uh, when we announced that we were doing it, it was always announced for fall 2013. Um, and so we're still in fall, and we're still on schedule. It's still going to make it. Um, but you guys work on Last Resort specifically. Yep. You guys can t take it away. Talk about well, that map. Really, it comes down to the fact that we deemed it was not <coughs> the experience that we wanted it to be when we set out to build it. Um, from a size perspective, it hurt both performance and gameplay. It didn't promote people actually engaging each other and it had a pretty horrible frame rate for a lot of people so it was an unacceptable experience for us to actually release yeah so chris is uh, back there slaving away to redo most of the map. not redo well no no optimize Rearrange. optimize yeah. mostly terrain work yep. mostly and so if you're curious what that means that means we're, we're lowering the count and the polys and how many polys are, are brought in there that helps yeah. um Terrain work has been has been said, and just uh, any gameplay adjustments you're making as well. Um, it went from being a l much larger open map where people tended to have s tiny clusters of combat to more of a triangular, smaller shape that kind of enforces people to go into a central area and fight. And it has a lot, probably the most verticality verticality that we have in any of our levels currently, including Burninator. Yes. So, but, but you're not going to fall into a pit of lava and die. Right. Yep. That's uh, a pit of boiling water. Yep. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so look for that. It is, it is still on track to make it in the fall. I know some fo fans yeah, have yeah. seen the trailer a million times, but we have a lot of new viewers, as we can tell mm -hmm. today. So for those of you who haven't seen it before, I'm going to play the trailer. 
Uh, this is Last Resort. It's our next map coming out this fall. Check it out. All right, we're back. Okay. Cool. There you go. That's a uh, sneak peek at the map, and we're still working on it. Ben, I muted you to play the trailer right before you were answering something about Disasteroids, and you did touch on it later, but you just oh, yeah. wanted to say. Uh, Disasteroids is indeed coming back. In the next update or the update after? I don't see any reason why it's not going to come back next week. So there you go. Look for that. Hey, we just keep throwing things into the next week. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe by the time we're done, we'll have all sorts of new features we haven't even thought of yet. Well, if we bring <laughs> Parsons back, he'll make up all kinds of stuff. I know, that's true. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Look, uh, lo lol. Terrible trailer. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad I made it for you. Meh. Um, Ice Weird again. Ben, can you please raise the lighting of the characters? I have to crank brightness on the monitor all the way up, and I have a hard time seeing some of the darker avatars. For, uh, maybe, uh, Inferno. Is that a specific thing? Ice Weird? I'm not sure. I don't know there's, the context. There's definitely maps that we could do since weeks. I know Burnator's been tossed around. One of those maps can slight lighting change. And yeah. All that stuff. Adjust your mic real quick. Just push up, it. Up, up. It's a, it's a connector. Up. Testing. Testing. Now you're fine. Sorry. Yeah. So anyway, lighting changes have been in talks for dark, dark maps like Burnator. Yeah. Speaking of maps, one thing that we did a while back was we, we renamed some of our maps. Um, we're, we're keeping some of the renaming. Couple a of couple, them. A couple. couple but of them. for the most part, uh, we're actually going to go back and, and use the old name as part of the way to kind of recapture our old attitude. So for uh, folks who liked a lot of the older map names, those are coming back as proof that we're refocusing. Uh, yeah. And so look for that. That should is that that should be the next update, I would imagine, because we've, oh, yeah. we've changed done. that data. Yep. So when you when you load it up, you'll see uh, map names that you recognize. Um, keep that in mind. Just yep. a little yep. little little thing out there. We wanted a, a little olive branch. We wanted to throw you guys to show you uh, that we do have your best interests in mind, and we're working towards that. Hey Ben, are you guys gonna add another tier under the weapons tree? No, but there are reasons as to why we're not going going to be doing that. Yes. That's about all we can say about that. Yeah. We will be talking about the weapons in detail um, in the future, but as we alluded to earlier in the, the broadcast, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a bigger conversation. It's, but it's not, it's not going to be a bad thing. No. No. It's stuff that I think that our long-term fans and new fans are really going to like. Yep. But we need to finalize some things first. This is the honest answer. Agreed. Uh, Justin W. Bother. With the pwning system, I found that in beta 1, you could hold down G and press new pwn to use it, and that pwn on the beta, the pwn will not work. Huh? <laughs> uh, I guess uh, you're having pwn problems. <laughs> I need to send an email to uh, OC support. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the question is, but OC support. Yep. I'll show you where it is. Right Dark. here. Yep. Right, right here on right. offensive combat. This is the, the live site. If you have any sort of technical issues whatsoever, you scroll on down and right here, there's a support link. These guys are great. They'll get back to you very quickly. They'll open up a ticket and we'll try to f solve the problem. Um, if you ever have an issue that's recurring that might be graphic related or visual of some kind, make sure that you tell them and uh, show the sh a screenshot if you can or video if you can. That helps a lot. I think he might have been talking about what uh, most players commonly do is they don't think to switch the pones oh, up until right. they actually need to switch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you try and switch while there's the opportunity present, as in you have a corpse below you, yeah. it's going to just fire the pone rather than wait to yes. decide on a new one. Gotcha. So you have to kind of make sure to try and switch your pones when there's no one dead 
around you? That is actually an issue that we should address uh, sooner than later. It's been an issue for a lot of people, I think. We'll add it to the list, though, and uh, make sure we look at it sooner rather than later. I even wrote it down. Awesome. Uh, DMAC, the pawn. Wait! Hmm. <laughs> the pawn <laughs> selector is not broken, but it's just kind of a little quirky right now, a little UX thing. Yeah. No return. Yeah, checking out. That's a bug. Now it switches and you have to get again. We've gone through all of our questions. Wow. That was fast. Yeah. Quick hour. Anything you guys like to add before we take off? Sweet! <laughs> <laughs> if this is your first time, or maybe in the oh last minute, last time joining us uh, here on the, our Twitch TV broadcast, uh, this is Offensive Combat, free to play, first person, browser based shooter. Uh, we will be releasing a standalone in the near future. We're working hard at, uh, at yeah. getting that out there. Um, but for now, you can play it in your browser on offensivecombat.com or facebook.com slash offensivecombat. Please like us while you're there. When we get to 500,000 likes, which you're pretty close to, we're in yeah. the, uh, we're, I think about in the 430,000 mm -hmm. range now. Um, I, can, I guess I could just look. Yeah, we're around 429,000 now. People uh, want to know when they can see their OCR in-game. We something. We want to... That's an easy thing for us to add. So probably not this next release this week, but the one after. It's a simple add. Show their OCR and their actual assists, which we're not showing currently. Yeah, that's one that's always bugged me is that we never showed the assists. Yeah. So, which not to sidetrack, but I see a lot of people asking for shirts. We haven't done a shirt contest in a while. Yeah. With Halloween coming up, maybe we should uh, see who can come up with the best Halloween costume or anyone wants to dress up as an OC character and that's for a bonus yeah. points. That's a fantastic suggestion. So here's what we'll do. Um, since we have Twitter, which we just told you about, which is twitter.com slash euphoriagames, and Facebook, which is facebook.com slash offensive combat, uh, if any of you guys want to dress up or put on a costume of you as an offensive combat character and uh, submit your picture to us and just, you know, throw the old at symbol at us or private messages, whatever whatever it <laughs> takes. Dublin. Uh, mm. <laughs> Welcome back, Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then uh, we will, as a team, we'll we'll pick some cool oh, ones and uh, we'll send out some shirts and we'll announce the winners on the the next show. Uh, yeah, that sounds Seems cool. cool. There you go, Justin. Um, yes. <laughs> that, <laughs> What's that, that's well, the well, armor, armor system will change. Yes, we are looking at that heavily. We want you to look how you want to look and play how you want to play. So, Epic Stalker asking about testing servers. Yes. That's in the works? Yes. Yep. Totally in the works. Uh, technically, the whole game is on a testing server right now because we're in open beta. But uh, yeah. specifically... It's more of a community testing server. Yeah. And that is in... Yes, we're, we're looking into that. Um, please talk about the test server real quick. That's pretty much all we can say about it for now. Yeah, um, I'm sure when we get closer to re releasing it, we'll have a sign-up page. Yeah. And go from there. Uh, devs, I've encountered a bug when you zoom in with the tier 3 sniper rifle, the M24. When you shoot and directly press Q after you hold your secondary weapon and primary weapon without gloves. That sounds like something um, you should submit to OC support, like we showed you earlier on the website. Grab a screenshot or a video if you can, and that will help our tech team uh, or art team, depending on what kind of bug it is, track it down and, and make the fix. Sounds like it's probably a tech issue, though. Yeah. You guys like the idea if done well. When are we getting user-generated content from Dublin Johnny, longtime supporter of the game? Um, uh, that's that's going to be a long time. Yeah. Yeah. We know that it's something that is very important to a game and its community, but we have to fix the core of the game right now. One thing that we... Yeah, that's important to us is fixing the things that we think are important to make the game more enjoyable and more fun for you, and that's our number one priority, um, along with social features. One thing we can tell you that we are doing. Um, User-generated content isn't in the near future, but user interaction it, with the game is going to be more prevalent in the near future. Yep. So you guys are going to have uh, a much more involved uh, mm -hmm. component of, of our game in the near future. Are you guys still in the mindset of having a skill tree with invisible snipers and exploding jumping and stuff? Ben? We are not ruling anything out at this point. We are looking at the uh, skill trees right now, and... 
if it sounds like it's going to be fun, we'll we'll do it. But fun uh, is key. We're not ruling anything out at this point. Fun is key. Yeah. Yeah, fun is key. Um. Okay. Well, I want to thank Spencer. I want to thank Ben. I want to thank myself because that's weird. <laughs> it really is for appearing on our show today. Uh, we'll be back again on November the 14th, I believe. Oh, wow. Yep, November 14th. And on that show, we'll be able to talk about what's going in our update that's being released next week. Thursday yep. is the date that we're shooting for. So a week from tomorrow is our next update. That will include a quick rundown. It will include um, some improvements to lobby chat. It will yep. um, uh, the, sh the jumping and firing bloom yep. issues. It will have... No uh, breakage. No breakage on crafting, which is probably... For me, at least, my favorite change. It's going yes. into the next one, uh, which also will add lucky a second lucky charm yep. to the the process instead of protection. Protection goes away. Yep. Uh, and uh, as part of that, you will now uh, you will get an improvement when using a lucky charm as opposed to no yes. change, which was possible in the past. Um, and I'm missing one other thing. Disasteroids is coming back. Disasteroids is coming back, and there's still one other thing that I'm forgetting. Map names. Auto Map names. No, auto balance. auto rebalance is out. Yes, that's out. We uh, we realized that that was creating some issues for folks. Oh no, especially mid match. Oh no, crafting will become easier. Yes, crafting will be easier because now items will not break. Number one, and number two, you can now have two lucky charms instead of one, and you don't need protection any longer. By the way, taken out of context, that sounds really strange. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, quick, does lucky charm affect tear up? Um, it, the tier up effects. There's a chance that when you level up um, from 99 to 100, that you can tier up. Offhand, I don't know. To be honest, not sure. with you. we'd have to check the data. But the difference that we do know is that if you are using a lucky charm and there's a place to go, it in theory should affect you. But yeah, don't quote us on the tier up yet. We'll have to look at us. We'll answer you in the forums and let you know. Right after this, I'll go talk to Tyler, Mr. Burglar. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you again on November 14th. Uh, thanks you guys for joining us. Uh, it was a good show. We're going to have some stuff to show you on our next one that I think you'll like. In the meantime, have a safe and happy Halloween. And if you don't celebrate it, eat a bunch of candy, whatever. Be safe either way. Uh, take care. We'll see you next time.